All right, howdy, and welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel with a video that I've been pretty excited about making for a long time. So without any further delay, uh, this is my 2006 uh, Land Rover LR3 HSE. So if you've been following along with my channel, I did a brief video a couple weeks ago of me actually purchasing this truck. Um, I was not something I was looking for. It just kind of fell into my lap just like how most car purchases uh, usually end up. Um, and it didn't look like this at all. So let's kind of get into the backstory of where I found this truck, how much I paid for it, and what I've done to it so far. So about uh, three or four weeks ago, I decided that I needed to get rid of my daily driver Volvo V50 and that little Volvo 240 I had. Um, in conjunction with some other life changes that we've been kind of uh, perusing that kind of fell into place. So let me talk about the car first, and then we'll talk about the reasoning behind the car. Uh, so I sold uh, my 2006 V70 Volvo that I purchased at the beginning of the, the pandemic for about $1,400 from a neighbor. Uh, it, needed a, it needed some work. It didn't pass inspection, which I had done. Uh, and an all in, I think I was probably into that car, cash out of pocket, maybe 2,000 bucks said and done. Uh, and I turned, I drove it, I put 10,000 miles on that Volvo and uh, it was a great car. It just didn't fit the need of my upcoming, uh, I guess, kind of requirements. Uh, so I sold it. I sold it for $4,000. Um, and the day I sold it, I looked on Craigslist and this was for sale. Uh, three owner truck, 164,000 miles, uh, needed some things, but seemed like a pretty good, pretty good deal. Uh, great, great, uh, toe green color and, uh, I went over there and I purchased it. So basically, I was in the initial purchase of this truck for 2,000 bucks. And you really can't beat a 2006, so that's a Jaguar powered 4.4 liter uh, LR3 in Tonga Green for around 2,000 bucks. But that's where the savings stopped. Um, if, if you noticed before in the previous video, which I can I'll link above, it had the 19 inch stock wheels on it, which I did like a lot. Uh, and brand new tires, but they were not uh, off-road kind of centric tires. Uh, so I found this set of, uh, I can't remember the brand, uh, what someone will tell me in the comments, I just can't remember at this, at this time. Um, this set of wheels was for sale in Roanoke for a hundred bucks. And the guy said he'd give them to me for free if I paid for shipping. So the wheels were free. They're very nice 18 inch Rover wheels that were on a LR4. Um, I then paid for uh, Sports Car Workshops to install the upper and lower control arms because they were shot, which came with the truck. They were sitting in the back, if you noticed in the last video, and uh, all the fluids and just kind of baseline everything because I was having you know some minor issues from lack of maintenance. So as this truck sits now, it's baselined, ready to go. It's not 100% yet. I still need a, another brake pad sensor and uh, a little bit of you know testing. I need to put some miles on it, but. That is the overall story for this truck. So now let's get into uh, the reason and the purpose for this build in this truck. Ooh. All right, so let me fire this baby up before we get into the rest of the story here. Uh, and open the windows because there's mosquitoes in here. Uh, so yeah, I haven't even cleaned this thing out or anything. This is pretty much as is. Um, great bit of storage back there, but, uh, yeah, but no more on the truck. So, uh, the big announcement is I was able to, with Cindy, uh, purchase a large, uh, well for Virginia, a decent bit of property, uh, around Wintergreen mountain, uh, that has some extensive, I wouldn't say trail networks, but it's got a mile long steep rock driveway. That's really only four by four and lifted vehicle accessible. Just uh, your average trip to go look at cabins in Charlottesville. <laughs> Insert, it looks, it's steeper than it looks. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, this, is, this is no joke. <laughs> Frank, you like this? Oh man. We are up here. We are up here. 
So, <laughs> obviously I needed to find a car to fit the duty for uh, going up there on uh, you know a nice equation, a nice uh, being able to get up there without any issues uh, and be kind of mindless. And the Volvo was not going to do it. That's a great city car. Uh, I was I looked at some ML55, some Cayennes, some Suburbans, uh, you know anything that falls in that comfortable four x four, not a dedicated off roader category, but just something that is you can put miles on. It's not going to depreciate too much. And it, you know, will not really, it has low range, uh, you know, some of the other later Cayennes and other things that just wouldn't, you know, uh, RAV4s. I mean, basically something that would, you know, check all those boxes and still deliver me what I needed. And I, I couldn't really find it anywhere. So, like I said, it was pure chance that I was snooping around Craigslist and this thing popped up. Um, so, yeah. There'll be more videos to come on the the cabin. That's that's the big announcement. That's why this was purchased. That's why I spec'd it out the way it is. Uh, I put the uh, the Discover ST Maxes on here, kind of splurged on the tires. Not something I usually do, but I had these tires on a work truck a long time ago and absolutely loved them. They were great on the highway, great in the snow, great in the mud. I think they expelled mud, uh, dirt, ruts, blah, 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 a lot better than the KO2s. And I think they wore nicer, uh, especially for highway riding and highway driving. But uh, as you can see under there, it looks all new. I'll, I'll cut to a, a shot of the underbody to show you how clean the bottom of this truck is. Uh, and then, you know, what it looked like kind of before and after. So we'll cut to that now. But still, they're like $100,000. Oh, yeah. Like the last of the air cooled will always be. Yeah. And that's why he wanted it. Uh, I've never looked around this car before, but even like these like uh, drive shaft keyboards and stuff look good. So do you want me to get, get you the Coopers or do you get those from Simple Tire? Uh, you're che cheaper. You had them cheaper, so. Four or five? Fuck. I don't know if you can get five in here. I don't think you get five. Yeah, it's not. Let's do that. Uh, that hitch pattern in the... All right, so we got the new coolant reservoir in. Uh, we just pressure tested the brakes and no uh, no apparent leaks. So I'm gonna purge the system, fill it back up and see how it looks. All right, so yeah, that was uh, the kind of the process of putting it all together, which is all pretty exciting. Um, I'm not gonna do any real driving videos or anything yet, um, but it is a 2006. I believe it's an HD package, I haven't confirmed it. I'm gonna have to drive it around and test the rear locker, make sure it engages, pop it into uh, to four low, see if that rear locker locks. Um, I'm gonna clean it up too. I just popped a, uh, a new cabin air filter in it because that probably hadn't been changed in a while. Um, so I'll put a quick video of that up. This uh, space booster is going to go on the top and I'm going to get some racks. Uh, so when we go up there, I can put my yard clearing equipment because it's going to take a lot of work to kind of get this place cleared out at the cabin. It sat for about three years. So I'm going to do a lot of yard maintenance. So between this, uh, the F-250, the Land Cruiser, I mean, those are going to be, you know, lots of weekends running up and back to kind of get stuff done in there. So this is going to be the dog car. This is gonna be the daily. Um, that's, and again, that's why I went ahead and splurged to do all the maintenance in it. And it really is the perfect rig for that. I mean, look at all the space back here. It's, it's huge. It's basically like a pickup truck. Um, this is an HSC model, so it's got some of the nicer radio controls and all that stuff I don't care about. But when these seats fold flat, there's enough room for me to do pretty much anything I need to do, fit anything I need to fit. But you know, with that, I can at least carry the, like, the dirty tools and stuff up there 
um, until I get things figured out. I got these uh, these D2 mats that I'm gonna use for this, so I don't have to spend any more money on mats and whatnot. So it's uh, it's all kind of coming together. So you know this, that's the gist of it. This is my I think I'm into this truck right now, all in for maybe three. 3,500 bucks. So let's call this my $3,500 higher mileage uh, Land Rover LR3, and I'm pretty stoked about it. We're doing a lot of videos on this truck, uh, kind of document my owner my ownership of it, and it's gonna stick around. I'm not really sure what other mods I need to do. To, oh, I forgot. I put the um, the lifting arms, the uh, the Lucky Eight lifting arms. They were installed as well um, because I'm taking this truck to Mar too. In the beginning of October. So I've signed up, me, myself and RVA Rover, we're gonna be up there. Uh, give me a shout if anyone's going tomorrow. So yeah, you know, it between the cabin and the, the off, potential off-road trips and me getting rid of the Volvo, this is gonna be the all-around vehicle for the next uh, probably year or so, unless something changes. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So that is the LR3 introduction. Obviously I'm gonna go into a little more detail later. But I uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, comments, drop it in the, uh, in the spot below. Remember to subscribe if you like the content. And I uh, appreciate you watching. See ya.